When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. There's a new subject of debate on the internet that has shown up in the last couple years that I feel the need to address because my opinions on it are very strong. I'm talking about vaccination. Naturally, like any other subject, there are disparate opinions on it, and like all other subjects of discussion in America these days, there are two sharply divided camps that are not listening to one another. The pro-vax community argues to tradition, and they argue that they have medical evidence on their side showing that vaccination prevents childhood diseases and provides lifelong immunity. On the other hand, you have the anti-vaccination community. Again, their arguments are based partially on medical evidence that they are presenting and partially on concerns about the rise of autism and wanting to protect their kids. There's definitely a common ground in that both sides want to protect their kids from harm. They want to provide their kids with the best possible start in life as far as health goes. But we have two different groups of people that are arguing with each other. They are not listening to each other. So let's get into this. Here's the medical evidence that we're looking at. On the pro-vaccine side, we've got over a century of accumulated data that shows that vaccination does protect patients from these preventable diseases. And these diseases are quite dangerous diseases, even deadly. Two of the most dangerous diseases in the history of the world are on the vaccine list, influenza and smallpox. Smallpox is a fairly simple vaccine and it was one of the first vaccines developed Influenza, however, is a lot more agile virus. It mutates very easily and very rapidly. It will jump from species to species. That's why the influenza vaccine is redeveloped every year. There are numerous vaccines against pneumonia, one of the top killers of elderly patients. There's vaccines against measles, mumps, and rubella. All three of these diseases can render patients permanently harmed if they survive the infection. The MMR vaccine was the one that was studied to provide the medical evidence that is cited on the anti-vax side. This study claims that autism is directly linked to the MMR vaccine, specifically certain ingredients in the MMR vaccine. And with the rising rates of diagnosis of autism spectrum disorders, parents grew quite concerned about what was in the vaccine and what harm they could be inflicting on their child trying to avoid causing them harm. Thus was born the anti-vax movement. Jeff Holliday has done several videos on this and I strongly recommend that you go to Jeff Holliday's channel and check out the anti-vax videos that he has there. He really has done his research on this and can go into greater detail. Please go check out his channel. But to provide a synopsis, the doctor who engaged in the study was discredited. Not just the study, but the doctor himself was discredited because of numerous problems with his research, with the way the data was used, with the way the data was gathered, and with conflict of interest. He was trying to develop his own alternate vaccine at the same time that he was conducting a study which claimed that MMR causes autism. That makes that entire study completely suspect, but it doesn't remove that study's existence from collective memory, especially since the doctor, who was subsequently stripped of his license to practice medicine, has kept the anti-vax movement going. He used controversy that his study created to bolster his claim that the governmental authorities were trying to suppress this information because it would have meant that the medical establishment had deliberately subjected the entire juvenile population of several countries to a dangerous, potentially deadly injection when they had data that showed that it would cause harm to those patients. I have sympathy. I have kids of my own, I don't want to inflict harm on them either. 
I want to protect them to the greatest extent that I possibly can from harm. And if somebody came to me with solemn medical evidence showing that a routine procedure is actually causing them harm, I would be very suspicious myself. The problem is that that medical evidence has been completely debunked, and although I have not looked at it as in-depth as some others have, like Jeff Holliday, I have looked at the evidence, and the research methods used by this doctor are scientifically and ethically unsound. This study has been completely debunked by the medical establishment. But because the medical establishment were the ones debunking the study and the study potentially indicted the entire medical establishment for causing harm to children, there's an awful lot of people out there that simply will not believe that their vaccines are safe. So, since I am naturally cautious about medical procedures for my children, does that mean that I'm not going to get them vaccinated? Um... No. Just... No. I was in the army for over two decades. While I was in the army, I had to endure a lot of vaccinations because the army wants to make sure that their soldiers remain healthy. They repeat all of the vaccinations as if they had never happened. And I can tell you, I have seen no evidence of soldiers developing symptoms of autism after they have received these injections. Furthermore, soldiers receive vaccination for a lot of other diseases that are not on the schedule for standard childhood vaccinations. I've not seen much data that conclusively proves that those vaccines are causing problems. Truth of the matter is that these vaccines go through a very rigorous development. It is not like the Old West style developments that were happening back in the early days of vaccines. And we have to keep in mind that there is a population of people who cannot be vaccinated. Those people who cannot be vaccinated are dependent on what's called herd immunity. But with the anti-vax movement convincing people not to vaccinate their kids, we are seeing outbreaks of diseases that were virtually eradicated. Diseases like whooping cough and diphtheria and tetanus and measles and mumps and rubella. Now all of the people that were protected by herd immunity are placed in jeopardy. They can't protect themselves because they can't be vaccinated. They're depending on everyone else to vaccinate their children to protect them. And if they're not vaccinating those kids, there's no herd immunity, you'll have these outbreaks, and people who would otherwise be able to lead a fairly normal life wake up in constant fear that this will be the day that their child is exposed to a easily prevented disease that will kill or permanently disable them. I understand the anti-vax concerns, however, I think those concerns are blown completely out of proportion based on falsified data and hysteria. And at least for my kids, I'm going to make sure that they continue to get vaccinated in accordance with the CDC's vaccination schedule. Now, that's just my opinion, and you don't have to agree with it. In fact, I'd love to hear what your opinion is, so go ahead and like or dislike this video. If you have something to say, leave a comment and continue the discussion. If you are interested in hearing what other opinions I have, click the button and ring the bell. New videos post every Saturday at noon central, so watch this space.